if I did the typical lectured three hours a week, labs three hours a week. I had 13 students in that class. Um, three semesters is kind of our rotation, so I had 21 students uh, the next time. And then it was between that summer um, and then the, the next fall I taught it was when I decided to flip it. And so I've taught it flipped twice, and I'll be teaching it again this coming fall for the third time. So the question is, why, why did I decide to do this? right? And particularly because I'm only teaching this class once every three semesters. It's at most typically, you know, typically we're more in the 10 to 15 student range. It really came down to, I was getting comments like, the math is harder than calculus. Well, the math is algebra. It's not, <laughs> it's not harder than calculus. It's a, <laughs> a lower level math. Um, or I'd have students come to my office, I, I, can't, I fi can't find the equation for this. There's no equation for this. I said, yeah, I know there's not, but you know, what, what is it that you're trying to solve for? What do you mean? I'm like, well, what are you, what are you trying to find from this answer, right? And, well, I have no idea. I said, okay, well, there's the first step, right? You've got to figure out what it is you're trying to, to determine to find that. And so I realized the students really did not have the problem-solving skills, and that was the biggest issue. And so then I had to work through, okay, if I want to get them to be able to solve these problems, what types of things do I need to do? And so what I'd like you all to, to discuss now with your partner is, is there some kind of problem in one of your classes that you think, why aren't the students doing this? Why aren't they grasping this? I need them to, that you think could be a big impact, either flipping or partially flipping to help that. So take a, a few minutes, talk with, the, talk with the person next to you, and see what you can come up with for a, a class where you maybe have an issue like this. Yeah, absolutely. So when you talk about big team, so you've done an upper level course. Mm -hmm. Is it sort of better suited to a smaller upper level? Can it be done with like a multi-section freshman? Level? Yeah, it absolutely could. And I, I'm kind of at that stage where I have those partially flipped. I haven't taken it all the way yet on those, um, but I feel like I absolutely could. Um, yeah, it's really, and one of the things I'll talk about from an implementation standpoint, it's about constantly reminding the students that this is a different style class, this is how it works, you got to learn about the car parts before you can drive the car. And so that's kind of the, the key, but yeah, absolutely, it can work at, at any level. So. I have an Ellen Green chair in biology. Oh, fantastic. And yeah, yeah. So, um, I'm very interested. So, I, um, we've been talking in my department about the 100 level biology teaching course. Um, we need to do something because they're coming in with such varied preparation and there's a lot of material to cover mm -hmm. and there's some pretty technical stuff in there. Yep. And, um, you know, it's just, it's, it's, there are parts of the course where it is. Mm -hmm. I think for the instructors, I don't teach this course, but I've listened to them and just yep. how hard it is and just to figure out some way to move the bar because yeah. um, just, just there's some concepts I know that are just, I think it's probably too in general chemistry as well, I guess, but I don't know. Mm -hmm. Oh, Gen Chem, yeah, absolutely, because they, yep. they <laughs> and part of it is, I want to. Well, you know, we know how much the return is from most traditional lectures. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Yep. This is what it is. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, and we know. And then we throw them into the problems that they don't have the math skills for, they don't yep. have the calculator skills for, they don't know scientific notation, right? Yeah. And expect them to swim. Yes. Yeah. We've talked about the pool. Yes. And then we threw them in on their own and walk out of the building. Is going to be something very different. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And so it's really about, and that's where the flipping really helps, is that you can. You know that that base. I mean, they can look up what a you know what a cell nucleus is. Right. <laughs> is that right? I mean, they don't. It's not something that you really need to tell them about. But it's those problem-solving types of things, or the more complicated material that they really need. The last night we were talking about you've got to put enough weight on it. Yeah. The hard part is getting them to do the prep work before. Right. Yeah. That's the. Yeah. I know you can speak to that. But I am. Yeah. Don't do the prep work. Then what do you do during class? If they're oh, you they haven't done it. You weighed in and you do the activity. Anyway. Yeah. You do. Yeah. Whether they've done the prep work or not, and they can be embarrassed by the fact. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. 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 Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Absolutely. But did you ask them first to recapitulate some of those, right? Mm -hmm. They come to class, they refresh, and, and you can even ask a second question, whatever the essential characteristics of each that you want to prepare to system. And, and they can come with that. Then, because of comparing and contrasting, that's higher level of thinking, mm -hmm. and that's what I'm struggling with. I mean, we, first of all, they need to learn more content, but then they're yeah. playing with Yep. So you ask them to refresh on things, and then you can really work on your comparing, contrasting in class. Yeah. I mean, that's yep. what I'm trying to do. Yeah, but absolutely. So, otherwise you never bring them anywhere. Right? True, yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah, you bring yep. them to know things, but like a dictionary rather than like a story. Exactly. So, yep. that could be something that would be yeah. nice. Yeah. Like if they come through those summary already, already. Yep. Yeah, no, it's just like things that, you know, again, like uh, conventional versus not conventional political participation. Mm -hmm. You know, that's covered in the American government course. You know, can voting versus protest. Okay, and I'll bring that into the comparative politics. And I'll ask them, what's the difference between conventional and unconventional? And they're just like stairs. You know? mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah. And so I have to, what I feel like I'm going to be doing is re teaching. I don't want to do that. No, to keep them at home. Yeah. yeah. To keep them at home. So you. So you Mm. So that's what, that's the yep. yeah. So you've got kind of a prereq issue where you're trying to, they should already know some of these things and don't, yep. Could you have yep. a sheet, for yep. instance, let's say, before we start this chapter, you need to make sure that you have filled all those, mm -hmm. and then you can go to the chapter. Yeah. Yeah, so, so one thing that can help with kind of the prereqs, and I have this issue even with the basic math skills in my class, and honestly, like the first day, one of our activities is just a basic math review. Like these are the key things you need to know. And so if you can implement, you know, some kind of survey um, or, you know, an assi online assignment where, okay, you know, yeah, it's a review, but if you're doing that um, at the beginning of the semester, you can get a feel for where they're at. The other thing is some of my classes I use sort of a like pre-knowledge type survey, exactly, a pretest to see, oh, okay, yeah, they all remembered this aspect, but none of them remembered this, and then I know when I get to that spot, okay, hey guys, we need to, to review what that is, and so there are things like that. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah absolutely. <laughs> All right, so again, I, I got to walk around a little bit and heard some really, really good conversations, and they're, they're, st <laughs> they're still going, which is, that's great. Um, so what are, some, what are some courses you guys have thought about or problems within your courses that you think you could address with flipping or, or partially flipping, potentially? Wanna... Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, we discussed uh, DBA 204, which is an applied math class okay. where we apply mathematics to business. Okay. So what we dis what we talked about was well, he happens to be my chair. So <laughs> <laughs> what we talked about is that probably um, our students, what we could let them do is uh, revise, you know the basic stuff for a particular topic. Mm -hmm. So for instance, if you are um, covering linear models, they revise the uh, um, equation of a line and so on before coming to class. So those are the uh, kinds of things we think we could do. Yeah, so kind of they're dealing with the same situation of applying mathematics in, a, in this case, a, a business yeah. setting. Yeah. Um, and so yeah, trying to figure out what kind of base knowledge can we, we get them beforehand. Yeah, great. 
great. Yeah. Um, and I had, there was a question that came up as I was going around about, well, you know, this is an upper level class, could you do this in an introductory class with large numbers? Absolutely. Um, I haven't fully flipped some of my introductory classes, but I'm kind of part way there. Um, and I think it works really well even in those big classes. It's just about designing those uh, in-class activities so that they're still able to work in small enough groups. Um, and we can talk about some of that as we, we go on. So. What I'm going to look at now are the exact things that I had done previously and what I did with the flipped class. So when I taught the traditional format, before they came to class, probably as many of your classes, I expected they'd read the textbook or <laughs> the, the scientific journal articles I assigned, right? These high expectations that they were just going to want to read all these things before class. Um, and then I would always put together these lists of terminology for each chapter and then uh, concept questions. And so typically what I did, I expected they would have those printed out. Ideally, they would have at least looked up the terminology and written definitions. And then in class, we would talk about those concept questions. And that was kind of the order of the lecture, the way for them to take notes. Um, with the flipped format, Instead, I put those terminology and concept questions and made them as an assignment beforehand. So you need to type up what all these terms are. Um, you need to know these basic questions. And then I had a, an online quiz where 